Why do some boaters run their outboards flawlessly through winter, while others end up with cracked blocks and $5,000 repair bills? The answer comes down to understanding cold water physics that manufacturers rarely explain in owner's manuals. Water at 40 degrees behaves completely different than summer water. It's 35% more viscous, transfers heat differently, and freezes at critical thresholds most boaters don't know about. Once you understand what's really happening beneath your hull and inside your cooling system, you'll change the way you operate in winter conditions. And no Know how to protect your investment. And it all starts at the prop. When water temperature drops from 80 degrees to 40 degrees, the viscosity increases by about 35%. Your propeller is pushing through a thicker fluid that creates more drag on every blade. The intermolecular attraction between water molecules gets stronger as temperature drops making water resist flow more aggressively. Here's the controversial part. Boaters think they need to change props for winter. But viscosity differences don't affect prop performance nearly as much as air temperature affects your engine's power output. Cold, dense air delivers more oxygen to your cylinders, which means you're making more horsepower in winter. The prop is working harder, but your engine is producing more power to compensate. Water density increases by less than one-third of one percent between cold and warm temperatures. That's negligible. Your boat might sit a quarter inch higher in cold water, but you'd need precision instruments to measure it. The real performance differences come from air density, engine temperature management, and hull friction dynamics. Increased viscosity creates more friction along your hull's entire wetted surface. In warm water, the boundary layer flowing along your hull is thin and slippery. In cold water, it becomes thicker and stickier, creating more skin friction drag. For planing hulls, this means you need slightly more speed to get up on plane. Deep V-hulls handle this better than flat-bottom designs, because they have less wetted surface area once running. Here's what most people don't consider. Cold water's higher viscosity actually improves propeller bite at lower speeds. When trolling or running slow in winter, that thicker water gives your prop better purchase for precise boat control. The downside is more heat generation at the prop and more load on your lower unit. If you've got water in your gear lube, winter operations will find that problem fast. Your outboard loves cold water for cooling and makes more consistent power in winter than in summer. When water temperature drops from 80 to 40 degrees, your engine runs significantly cooler while producing the same power. Heat transfer efficiency increases dramatically because there's a bigger temperature difference between hot cylinder walls and cold cooling water. Most four-stroke outboards run with a thermostat maintaining coolant temperature around 122 degrees Fahrenheit. In summer, when intake water is 70 or 80 degrees, the cooling system works overtime. In winter, when intake water is 40 degrees, the cooling system barely breaks a sweat. This is why you'll often see higher top speeds in cold weather. The controversial part dealers don't mention. If you do a lot of trolling or low-speed winter fishing, Consider installing a higher temperature thermostat. Suzuki and other manufacturers offer thermostats that open at higher temperatures specifically for this. At low speeds in cold water, your engine might struggle to reach proper operating temperature, which can lead to carbon buildup, incomplete combustion, and oil dilution. That higher temp thermostat keeps the engine warmer during extended idling, protecting internal components. At what temperature do you risk freezing damage? 32 degrees Fahrenheit for fresh water and 28 degrees for salt water. But the real answer depends on time, exposure, and what you do after pulling the boat out. When air temperature drops below freezing, any water trapped in your engine, cooling passages, or lower unit can freeze and expand. Water expands about 9% when it freezes with enough force to crack aluminium blocks, split water pipes, destroy impellers, and shatter plastic components. The critical factor is duration. One night at 32 degrees probably won't hurt a properly drained engine. Three or four hours at 20 degrees absolutely will if there's trapped water. The most common problem is duck hunters freeze up. 
You tilt your outboard up to keep it out of the marsh muck, and water gets trapped in the midsection, water pump, or cooling passages. When temperature drops, that trapped water freezes, and you're looking at $500 to $5,000 in repairs. The fix is simple. Always keep your motor in the fold-down position when it's not running in freezing weather. Let gravity drain that water to the submerged portion where it won't freeze. Inboards with raw water cooling need even more care because you've got a heat exchanger, oil cooler, and potentially a transmission cooler all full of water. That raw water will freeze at 32 degrees if it's fresh water, or 28 degrees if it's salt water. Proper winterization means running marine-grade propylene glycol antifreeze through every single raw water passage. Starting a cold engine separates experienced winter boaters from those who spend spring money on repairs. If you've got a four-stroke, check your owner's manual for cold weather oil recommendations. Mercury and Yamaha specify 10W30, while Honda prefers 5W30. That lower viscosity oil flows more easily when cold for better lubrication during critical first seconds. Your battery loses about 30% of cranking power at 32 degrees. Keep batteries on a maintenance charger between trips. Some late model outboards require up to 100 amps to crank, and a cold, weak battery won't deliver. Turn the key to on and let the fuel system prime. On carburetted engines, use the primer as recommended without overdoing it. Overpriming floods the engine and washes oil off cylinder walls. Don't hold the starter for more than 10 seconds at a time. If it doesn't fire, wait 30 seconds and try again. When it starts, let it idle for at least 3 to 4 minutes before touching the throttle. Dissimilar metals expand at different rates and need time to reach equilibrium. Here's the controversial bit. You absolutely cannot warm up your outboard by running it out of water. Even bumping the starter briefly without water flow can damage your impeller. Cold weather makes the rubber brittle, and dry running tears those veins apart. Use muffs connected to a hose, or let it warm up in the water at the ramp. Winter seas bring steep, close interval chops that can pound a boat mercilessly if you're not set up correctly. Winter waves are shorter and steeper because cold air affects how waves form. You get less fetch, but more violent surface conditions. For running into a head sea, trim your engine in and drop your bow with trim tabs. This puts your sharp forward sections into the water where they can slice through waves rather than pounding over them. Trimming in aggressively might feel counterintuitive, but comfort and safety trump fuel economy in rough winter conditions. The trim tab technique is subtle and constant. Small adjustments every few seconds based on what the boat is telling you. If the bow wanders left or right, adjust the tabs asymmetrically. If you're taking spray over the bow, lower both tabs another notch. Find that sweet spot where the hull is cutting through the waves. For running in a following sea, trim your engine out and raise your tabs completely. This lifts the bow and improves steering response, which is critical when surfing down wave faces. A stern heavy attitude in a following sea can lead to broaching. Winter following seas are particularly dangerous because those steep faces can grab your transom and twist the boat violently. Not all hulls are equal in winter performance. Deep V-hulls with dead-rise angles of 20 degrees or more absolutely dominate in winter conditions. That sharp entry angle at the bow cuts through steep chop like a knife. And the deep V-shape provides stability when you're getting tossed around by confused seas. Center consoles with deep V-hulls are popular in northern climates for good reason. Modified V-hulls represent a compromise. They've got some V at the bow that tapers to a flatter section at the stern. In winter chop, they'll pound more than a deep V, but remain more stable than a flat bottom. The key with a mod V in winter is speed control. These hulls have a sweet spot just above minimum planing speed where they ride smoothest in chop. Flat bottom and low dead rise hulls aren't great choices for winter conditions. These hulls are designed for calm water speed and stability at rest. When you hit them with steep winter chop, they transmit every wave impact directly to the occupants. If you're stuck with a flat bottom boat in winter, slow way down or don't go out when conditions are rough. 
Cathedral hulls and pontoons have their own challenges. The multiple sponsons or tubes create more surface area hitting waves, which means more pounding and spray. They're stable platforms, but comfort in rough winter seas is not their strong suit. Keep pontoons to protected waters and calm days. Fuel temperature actually matters more than you think, especially in winter. Gasoline changes density with temperature. Cold fuel is denser than warm fuel, which means you're getting more energy per gallon when you fill up in winter. The bad news is that fuel system icing and water contamination become serious issues. The most common problem is water in your fuel. Water and gas don't mix, and when temperatures drop, that water separates out and sinks to your tank bottom. If it freezes, you've got ice in your fuel system that'll shut your engine down. The fix is prevention. Keep your tank as full as possible to minimize airspace where condensation forms, and use a good water-separating fuel filter. Check that filter bowl regularly in winter and drain any water immediately. Fuel line icing catches people by surprise. When cold fuel flows through fuel lines at high speed, evaporative cooling can drop the temperature further. If there's even a tiny bit of water in your fuel, it can freeze right in the line and create a blockage. Here's the controversial truth. If you're running ethanol blend fuel, adding more alcohol-based de-icer is actually a bad idea. Ethanol already attracts water, and adding more alcohol can damage fuel system components, strip protective coatings, and wash oil off cylinder walls in two strokes. The better solution is running non-ethanol fuel whenever possible, keeping your tank full, and using a stabilizer with water dispersant properties. Ice and snow damage is real and expensive. Snow is heavy. A cubic foot of wet snow weighs about 20 pounds. When that accumulates on your boat cover or console, it causes serious structural damage. Snow load on a flat canvas cover can collapse the support structure, rip the cover, and dump snow and water into your boat. Use a frame-style cover support system that sheds snow rather than collecting it. You want peaked supports that let snow slide off naturally. If you're soaring outside in winter, check after every snowfall and brush off accumulation before it builds up. Frost and ice on your outboard cowling can affect engine performance. Ice buildup blocks air intake vents, which restricts airflow and creates a rich running condition that fouls plugs. It can also accumulate inside the cowling where it melts and drips water onto electrical components, causing corrosion. Store your outboard under cover or remove the cowling after each trip and let everything dry completely. Here's a tip. If your outboard is going to sit outside in freezing weather, leave the cowling off, but loosely wrap the power head with a breathable cover. This prevents ice and snow from accumulating directly on the engine while allowing moisture to escape. Sealed cowlings in freezing weather can trap moisture inside, which then freezes and expands, potentially damaging electrical connectors and sensors. For outboards, 32 degrees Fahrenheit is your danger zone if you have fresh water in the cooling system. Below that temperature, any water left in the powerhead, water pump, or lower unit can start to freeze. The critical factor is duration. An hour or two at 32 degrees is probably fine if you've drained properly, or night at 32 degrees is rolling the dice. Below 28 degrees, you're in serious danger. Even salt water can freeze at this temperature, and any trapped fresh water will definitely freeze and cause damage. Below 20 degrees, if there's water anywhere in your system, it's going to freeze and crack something expensive. The damage window is about 90 minutes of sustained exposure for a drained system with residual water. For inboards with raw water cooling, you have more components at risk. Heat exchanger, transmission cooler, exhaust manifolds, and seacocks. Closed-loop cooling systems with proper antifreeze are good down to about negative 34 degrees with a 50-50 mix of propylene glycol and water. Lower units are particularly vulnerable because water enters through the prop shaft seal. When it freezes, it expands with enough force to crack the aluminium housing. Prevention is simple. Change your lower unit oil before winter, inspect for water contamination, and fix any leaking seals. Even if you're using your boat through winter, basic winterization steps protect your investment. 
you're protecting between trips when temperatures might drop below freezing. The most critical step is draining your cooling system after every trip. Tilt your outboard all the way down immediately after pulling out. Let it drain for several minutes while loading gear. Start the engine briefly, just a one or two second bump to blow out remaining water. Don't run it longer or you'll damage the impeller. Keep your tank at least three quarters full to minimize condensation and add fuel stabilizer even if you're using the boat regularly. Use a marine-specific stabilizer with corrosion inhibitors. Check your battery voltage before every trip. Cold weather is merciless on weak batteries. Keep batteries on a maintenance charger between trips. Lower unit oil should be changed before cold weather season starts. Fresh gear lube protects against water contamination. If you're doing a lot of winter running, check your lower unit oil mid-season. Water intrusion shows up as milky or grey-coloured oil. For inboard owners, check your antifreeze mixture with a hydrometer to confirm you're protected to at least negative 20 degrees. For raw water-cooled components, consider installing a drain valve at the lowest point, so you can quickly drain after every trip. If understanding the laws of physics has piqued your curiosity, then check out our video on wider boat physics secrets every owner should know. The physics of cold water boating is practical knowledge that directly affects your safety and wallet. Most cold water damage is completely preventable with proper draining and respect for freezing temperatures. Master these fundamentals and you'll understand that cold water physics isn't something to fear, but something to work with for incredible winter fishing opportunities. Thanks for watching, stay safe out there, and I'll see you in the next one.